The Owasipi Scout Reservation is more than just a camp. It is a home away from home, a place where memories are made. It is the place that many families, troops, and packs choose to return year after year, generation after generation. As scouts and campers grow up, many return to camp as staff, where they get to help the next group of kids enjoy their time at camp and want to come back. I have never not had Owasapi as part of my life. My parents met working at Owasapi in the mid-70s. My dad, I think his first year with his troop, probably 64 or 65, was his first summer at Owasapi. And then my mom went to Owasapi with her aunt and uncle. So her uncle's troop would camp up there and then mom would go with her aunt and her cousin, Vicki, and stay at what was family camp at the time while the troop was at the site. And that was probably in the early 70s. I would say she, she may have been like in high school, probably at the time. So they met, they worked on camp staff for, for two years at the same time. And then I was born in 1980. As a child, I wasn't a camper. My dad would help with staff training. So a lot of my memories are going up during staff week and just kind of running around while my dad was helping with staff training. And so either being at Runnaker or camping at a site in Wolverine, but not necessarily always being part of the program. I was a CIT in the summer of 96 and for five summers I was on staff. So my last summer was 2000. I want to say six years, seven if you include the, the year currently, but I think we've been going up there for going on a good, maybe 50 plus years, uh, one year, one summer, but it'll be two this upcoming. My dad went to Wasabi in the 50s as a scout um, and then came back in 1970. Um, as a leader of a Boy Scout troop and continued with that troop um, through sometime around 2010, I'd say. Um, and then since then, he's either worked or volunteered at Owasapi every summer. I went to Owasapi for the first time in the summer of 1981 to family camp for one week. I worked with Owasapi for seven summers from 1993 to 1999. And you heard part of my family story from my mom, but the most recent chapter began 17 summers ago when I was just three weeks old and had a significant update last summer when I finally joined staff. As every camp does, Owasapi has its traditions. One of the most important traditions are the Sunday and Friday night campfires every week. Sunday has a combination of songs, skits, and stories planned out by the staff. Friday combines performances from the staff and short skits made up by the scouts. And the scouts love every minute of both. Each camp has its own traditions that it adds to the basic campfire formula, but on a very basic level, they're all quite similar. And since campfires are the first and last time the whole camp really gets together each week, especially at the non-dining hall camps, the fires are likely the most important programs and thus create a lot of long-lasting memories. One that always comes to mind is Kirchberger's favorite kangaroo song. And I just remember through my younger years just dying of laughter every time we did it. And, you know, back when I didn't work, just making stuff up with my troop and just going with it, not caring like, about the quote-unquote quality of it because no one out there is an award-winning playwright. One was being so involved with the uh, campfire story as a whole last year. It was just really fun, especially building on that I'm already an actor and I haven't eccentric personality, as some would say, and also just seeing close friends and other troops that I haven't seen in a minute. Yeah, a lot of the campfires, except for Reniger, are all right um, on a lake 
they're all done in the evening as the sun is going down and you're watching the light of the fire dance on the water and um you know when you arrive at the campfire you can still see the trees and the wa the water and the woods and everything around you and as the fire builds and grows and as the fire goes on the the light around you grows darker and you're really just more concentrated on everything going on at the fire and and only the fire is really lighting everything for everybody and it's it's one of my favorite things to sort of watch that progression and to see everybody and the good fire sets up so that there's lots of activity and nobody's afraid of the dark and you're really having fun and then it really comes to sort of a quieter end as the fire grows lower and as you're prepared to to send the scouts away and it's really just it's a it's an incredible setup to be able to watch this whole thing in a, in a well done fire and to have everything work that way being a little kid you know like campfires are really magical especially when it's dark at night and you've got the light in the background behind somebody singing and i'm pretty sure my earliest campfire memory that wasn't my dad singing something was andy gore's singing puff the magic dragon uh, that one just stuck with me but and my dad would always sing miss mousy and me or my sister would always be pulled onto his lap to be miss mousy and that was kind of a fun early memory of campfires i enjoyed the excitement that goes along with a campfire you know at the beginning of the week you're you're introducing your staff to the new campers and it's really i feel like a campfire is the great way to set up the tone for the week and the energy level and that was always kind of a fun way to kick it off um it's also fun to see your friends perform songs and skits of course campers especially those who come back for multiple years start to pick favorite songs, skits, and stories. Some of the most popular campfire pieces are parodies of popular real-world songs about camp. Beyond the funny parodies of the songs that many love outside of camp, many campers, leaders, and parents alike come to enjoy all of the other camp songs that Owasipi has to offer. For years and years and years at Owasipi, people have done the Cremation of Sam McGee, which is a Robert Service poem. And while I've always appreciated that one and other stories that leaders or older staff would tell, Personally, when I was 11 years old, I really liked another service poem, which was the Ballad of Blasphemous Bill, and loved it so much from camp that I learned it for a school project and shocked my sixth grade teacher to recite this poem of the Yukon, which is five pages long. And I've never forgotten it. And in fact, that summer after I learned it for school, the next summer was the last summer that Camp Robert Crown was open. And that summer I did the poem uh, at a Sunday night full camp campfire in front of, you know, probably a hundred kids and leaders and different things at a, as an 11 year old girl, years away from being on staff and, you know, basically the same age as the youngest scouts in camp. And I've never forgotten that poem. It's been 30 years since, but it's a really fun way to get most kids, most boys wouldn't say, ooh, poetry, but it's just, they tell these stories and it makes everybody listen to, to the story and it makes everybody stop and see the story in their mind and think about the experiences in the Yukon or think about the experiences of of whatever the storyteller is and it's amazing the attention that you can hold everybody with as you tell or listen to this story around a campfire. And Trisha Monahan and I would sing the Titanic together. That's a fond memory. We did that one a lot together. Purple Stew was a fun one too. Uh, whip 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 Whip. Blue Water Line 
has been a favorite of mine. The Kangaroo Song, as I mentioned earlier. The Invisible Bench is a classic. Um, I sort of like 60s Party. It's a, it's a bop and it's all right. Oh, the Pizza Man, Fable Billy Dop, or whatever the name is. This summer, scouts, weeblos, leaders, families, and even the staff will miss out on the chances to make these memories. Of course, having virtual camp is a perfectly reasonable course of action, given the situation of the world, but it is upsetting to think of the lives Owasipi will be unable to change this summer. How can one do a virtual campfire? A pre-recorded live stream of staff videos seems like it just won't match up. How can camp, which regularly values taking a break from technology to experience the woods, be held over computer in each camper's house? So, of course, nothing can ever replace being there. And being there is what forms the bonds of friendship that allow us to create it in a virtual sense. For me, my family goes to Camp Renneker, which is the family camp on the property. And when we go, we we see friends who we've known for several decades, <laughs> some our whole lives. And while well, we grieve not being able to meet with them in person, at the same time, we, we live in a time where I can see their face in a second if we're both available over video chat, which is something that I wouldn't have been able to do had this happened in the late 90s when I worked on staff. I think it's something that we have to do to to keep everyone safe right now. And I think those of us who truly have WASP in our heart will do things to keep that bond of friendship alive. And we will continue on and hope that we can all be back on the property next year. I think that adding technology in, although I realize that over the years people do bring laptops and cell phones and different things with them, but a lot of the scouts don't have that with them. And I think that you start to lose some of the uniqueness of getting out of the city, of going 200 miles away, of being where you feel far away from the real world, sort of, on these a thousand acres of space in the woods in Michigan, that I think you'll start to lose that when it's just on a screen with kids still at home and there's still the pull of video games and other things on their computer and things like that. So I hope they will find unique and interesting ways to hold their attention and to hopefully bring them back because you can go and find one person who went to Owasipi one time one summer as a scout who is 40 or 50 years old and will stop and just absolutely smile and listen and talk to you about their experience at Owasipi even if it was just one week one summer you know as, as a kid or you'll find people whose siblings went to camp and they didn't and they'll hear, you know, oh, my brother went, I was always so jealous, or oh, my, you know, my son went, or my whoever, and they'll just have wonderful things to say about it, and I hope that this one summer won't change that effect. A lot of the experience is going to be lost because there are some things you just can't replicate on a Zoom call or any one of these meeting places. There are only things you can experience if I being there and doing it. Now, keeping the spirit alive through the virtual class is, I think, the best course of action so that it's just not a gap year without a, anything, a wasp But it's going to be a huge shift change for those who've been coming there years prior. At the end of each campfire, all staff in attendance, current or former, whether or not they worked at the camp whose fire they're at or another, are all invited down to the front of the fire bowl. They join hands and sing the Owasipi hymn. Afterward, campers are dismissed to their sites, and the staff stays behind to put out the fire and sing the camp songs of all of the individual camps, including the camps that no longer exist. Um, my favorite ritual would still be the staff gathering after every fire, and there's 
an order of songs that they sing and it varies a little by camp but to you know there's there's just a ritual to doing the, the putting out the fire even if they have stopped using a bucket brigade they still do the same ritual and it is really an incredible part of the campfire um, that like I said few people get to participate in that after everybody sings the Iwasabi hymn and the scouts are there the staff does one more verse of the Iwasabi hymn that the um, as the scouts are all gone and then sings all of the camp songs together and that's probably my favorite ritual. I really enjoy the ritual of, of, of an Iwasabi campfire at the end where we we hold hands and sing the Iwasabi hymn. After the Iwasabi hymn is sung and all of the scouts are out and when staff does bucket line and they sing all the camp songs, the camps that are still in, that are still active as well as some of the camps that are no longer active or retired <laughs> camp songs like there's the Renneker song, but there was a family camp song that gets sung. And it is this long and standing tradition, which proves to me that even through all of the challenges it will face, Owasipi will survive a year of virtual camp. If the staff can continue to keep the magic of camps that no longer exist alive, then of course they can do that for camps that will only be closed for a summer.